Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian, game designer of Master of Command, and director of Armchair History Interactive. If you haven't seen already, we released our first trailer for Master of Command Prussian Glory. Stay tuned for a comprehensive gameplay reveal sometime this summer. For now, let's dive into what Master of Command is all about. Keep in mind that everything you'll see today is just early concepts and sketches, as we're still in early development. Master of Command is a unique single-player game that pairs historical strategy with the roguelike genre. Set in the 18th century, during the Seven Years' War, you start the game by selecting one of three factions, Prussia, Russia, and Austria, and selecting an army composition you want to start your playthrough with, each with its own pros and cons. More army compositions can be unlocked through completing challenges. We chose this setting for the game as it's mostly an unexplored theme and puts the player in the shoes of Frederick the Great, who was essentially fighting a war of survival on all fronts, and this really provides a unique and challenging experience that's well suited to the roguelike genre. For those unfamiliar, roguelike games are those that primarily fulfill two requirements, permanent death and random map generation, but we'll get to that in a bit. Once you choose your army, you're sent to a regional map surrounding the Kingdom of Prussia. Every playthrough contains a random shuffle of regions in this general area, meaning everyone's Seven Years' War experience is going to play out differently every time. In one playthrough, fighting may be concentrated in the north around Pomerania, but in another, it's around Silesia and Saxony. Every region contains a set difficulty and reward, and these change every time you play. Now let's talk about what happens when you choose a region to campaign in. Once chosen, a completely randomly generated terrain layout is made for your campaign in that area. This unpredictability forces you, like a real commander of the 18th century, to adapt to dynamic conditions, ensuring every playthrough is a test of your strategic abilities. Your mission here is to reach the enemy encampment and face them in a large climactic battle, which is ultimately how you secure a region like painting the map in a historical strategy game or beating a boss in a roguelike. But the enemy's camp that you're after grows the longer you spend campaigning in this region. If you move too fast to reach them, you may face the enemy unprepared, but too slow, and they'll grow too strong. To prepare for this fight, you'll be doing things like aiding locals through unique encounters, conscripting troops at local villages or towns, and even confronting small enemy forces to gain veterancy and loot, all while advancing toward the enemy camp. And the terrain on this map isn't just decoration. You can leverage the terrain to gain advantages, just as strategic masters like Hannibal Barca or Gustavus Adolphus did by choosing to navigate through challenging terrain, like using mountain passes to obscure your movements. You slow the rate at which the enemy's camp is reinforced, as they've lost track of your army. This strategy, while effective, comes with its own set of challenges, including the increased consumption of your supplies and high attrition rates on your troops. Visiting nearby villages for winter coats and extra provisions might be the prudent course of action to prepare for such a demanding campaign. Once you find yourself thrust into combat, whether it's the enemy camp or a group of enemies along the way, you'll be sent into a pitched battle. Our battle system operates fully in real time, requiring you to vigilantly monitor your troops' morale, ammunition, and effectiveness. Officers are an important part of battle. You can see here how each of your divisions has a commanding officer. Despite our game's stylized graphics, we are aiming for battles to be realistic and impactful with long-range engagements. Assuming you've won your battle and lived to fight another day, it's time to check out your army's camp. This screen is where you can manage all the regiments and officers under your command. You'll be able to equip your regiments with all sorts of individual items, including muskets, bayonets, and even small items like cartridge boxes or grenades. Additionally, you can personalize your army by changing the pattern or color of regimental flags, which, in turn, changes the uniform color those men go into battle with. It's important to feel a sense of attachment to these troops, who you'll be taking with you for the whole duration of your campaign. Instead of discarding weaker units over time and replacing them with better ones, you'll be able to directly upgrade and reform your existing regiments, like upgrading Bare Bones recruits all the way up to a Grenadier Regiment. This preserves your regiment's history and the items you've given them. 
Throughout your campaign, you will gain experience and improve your army through attributes, which you can add to your general. And as you grow, so do your officers with new traits and abilities. These officers hail from different cultures and backgrounds, each bringing different bonuses and penalties that you can play around to improve the ability of your regiments. There's a bit of risk and reward at play, because you must assign an officer to be attached to a regiment in each division. So the closer you have that unit to the front line, the bigger buffs you'll notice, but you're also risking that officer's life in combat. For those familiar with the time period, you'll know that many officers were killed in battle during this war especially. So once you've won your first set of battles and secured your first region, how do you win a game of Master of Command? Well, once you've taken enough regions, which get increasingly difficult over time, a final assault is launched around your capital, and this will be the hardest battle for you to fight. Our difficulty curve looks something like this, which starts the game off easier and becomes harder as you learn the ropes. Sometimes, historical strategy games can have an inverse of this difficulty curve, which is why some of you may have found yourselves quitting certain empire-building games because you get so powerful by the end that the AI simply can't keep up. We've spent a lot of time refining our core gameplay loop, and despite the smaller region we're covering, we really think you'll find our game to be a unique experience every time you play. For now, that's all I've got to show off. I hope this gives you a clearer picture for our plan for Master of Command Prussian Glory. We're definitely going to make more development diaries that go into further depth on the individual systems showcased today. Let us know down below what you want to learn more about next and any suggestions or critiques you might have. The best way to support us is by wishlisting on Steam and becoming a member of our Patreon. Mid-tier or higher support on Patreon will get you access to the game a full week before it releases. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time.